hit record here. Welcome everyone for joining us today for our Arts Academy. We are joined by Jane Lynch, who is La Mirada's Theater Operations Manager. And she is going to be taking us on a virtual tour and uh, showing us all the spectacular productions that the theater puts on that includes musicals and dance and concerts, comedy and so much more. So Jane, we welcome you to Clifton. Thank you for taking part in this. If you wanna just kind of lead the way and then Mr. Morrison and I, the assistant principal will moderate um, questions as they pop up. Um, students and staff, if you wanna pose your questions in the Q&A, that helps us keep track to make sure we don't miss any questions. So without further ado, welcome Jane Lynch. Hi everybody. Thank you so much for inviting me today to do this. This is super exciting. Um, I am the Theater Operations Supervisor at La Mirada Theater, and that title sounds a little funky. Maybe you don't really know what that means, because sometimes I don't know what that means. Um, I do a lot of things here. We have an artistic director who is in charge of everything, uh, and I basically assist him in selecting shows we're going to produce or present, and by present, I mean say there's a concert that's touring around the country or something, um, we will reach out to those agents and we'll say, hey, we want to present you at La Mirada Theater. So we pick shows, we research a lot of shows, um, and we're doing musicals, plays, comedy, dance, uh, concerts, kids shows. Uh, sometimes the theater gets rented by community groups and they'll put on a recital or a presentation so we're, when we're not in a pandemic, <laughs> we are a very busy performing arts theater and there's always something going on here. Now today I'm going to show you a, a video tour that I put together for you um, and introduce you to a couple people that are here still working um, while we prepare to have another season of shows. Um, it's a little different because there's not a lot going on, so I couldn't really show you any live sets happening or that kind of excitement that usually goes on here. But I think what you'll find is that um, it's pretty interesting, some of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. So I do have a video to show you if um, I think I need to maybe share my screen if I'm able to do that. Let me, I don't know, Jennifer, do I need to have you Some should have of... access right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, you should try it. Okay, let me see. Oh, there it is. Quick time. Okay, optimize. Do, do, do. Okay. Um, hold on. Work here. All right, here we go. Hello there. Welcome to La Mirada Theater. We're in the lobby right now. My name is Jane. I'm the theater operations supervisor here, and I'm going to take you on a little tour. We're going to meet some people that work here, find out what they do, maybe show you some cool stuff. Come on, let's go. Let's go visit Rob, the master electrician. Oh, hey, Rob. What are you up to? Oh, hey, Jane. I'm just sitting here programming a little bit of cues on my on my machine here on the computer and uh, making myself some looks and practicing on building up some cues. Awesome. What are you up to? Well, I'm giving a tour to these students today, and they were wondering what a master electrician at a theater does. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do here? Well, my job actually here is twofold. The first part of my job is to take care of and maintain all of the instruments and all of the lighting equipment that we use to actually run the shows and do the shows. That's mostly with me being able to figure out when they go wrong and how to fix them or when they need to go off and be sent off for repair. The second half of my job is actually programming the shows and making the looks and the lights 
for the actual show that they, as they happen. And I do that by building a number of cues. Each one of the lighting cues has a specific look of lights that I build up on the stage with uh, my little computer here. And they're done in sequence. And uh, as I go through each one of them in sequence, it'll help build up a scene or describe a song or do each one, uh, go through each um, <coughs> cue one by one, which builds up in an actual look. Um, I can show you some of the stuff that I've done. I've been working on a song right now. That sounds great. So let's see here. If we can turn off those lights. Yep. And let me put myself into my first proper cue because everything goes in order of numbers here. And make all of this stuff go where it's supposed to. All righty. And let's see. Let me show you a little bit of what we do here and how the cues kind of work with the music. And lights and sound, go. for sharing that. Your job looks like a lot of fun. Well, it actually is a lot of fun. I must say, I can't actually honestly say that I've ever actually gone to work a day in my life. This is a lot of fun, and it's nice to build up cues and entertain. I hope you guys learned something from it or got a little bit out of it, and who knows, maybe some of you might actually want to turn into master electricians yourself at some point. Thanks, Rob. See you later. See ya. Bye. Let's take a look inside the theater. And there goes the main curtain. Normally there'd be a set on stage. Let's go visit backstage. Check in on our technical director. There we go. This is the green room. Little kitchen in there. Dressing rooms are down that way. Let's see what's going on on stage right. Oh, hey, Chris. Oh, hi, Jane. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. All right. So you're the technical director here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what that means? Technical director. Well, it means I'm in charge of everything that happens backstage. I'm in charge of the crew. I'm in charge of uh, making sure everything is safe, making sure everything is loaded in properly, making sure everybody's doing their job safely, and uh, just pretty much overall, making sure everything is going well and uh, safe. Awesome. Now, what's this uh, system you got here with the ropes? This is our fly rail system. Um, these are uh, arbors and our counterweight rigging system. Um, this operates anything that's flowing on stage. And so any of the curtains that go in and out or anything that's hung up in the air, it's all controlled by this system. So um, arbor system, so or counterweight, means whatever it weighs on stage, we have to match the weight here at the arbor, so it counterbalances itself as things go in and out. So that's an electric coming in, and this is how he pulls it in. So we bring this in so Rob can work on his lights at ground level rather than going up in the air and working on them. So we're able to fly them in to an actual working height. Pretty amazing stuff. And once again, whatever weight is on this, we have to put on the arbor so then that way we can fly this in and out. All right. Well, hopefully soon we'll have another set on this stage to play with. But thanks for your time today, Chris. No worries. Thanks, Jane. All right. All right. Let's head back inside the theater and see what else there is to look at around here. Oh, by the way, these are our brand new seats. 
gorgeous seats that we got a couple years ago. This theater seats about 1,251 people. Whoa, what was that? Someone must be at the soundboard. Let's see who's up there. Oh yeah, there we go. That's Josh, our sound engineer. Hey, Josh. Let's go talk to him and see what he's up to today. Okay, here we are at the front of house sound position where Josh is working on some stuff here at Mission Control. Anything cool to show us today? Yeah, I, I thought it might be interesting for people to know that everything that you see here, this is basically just a control surface for a computer. And all of these fader banks and all of the screen and everything else, it's essentially like a keyboard and a mouse controlling a computer, but just a lot more controls. And because of that, if you see here, you can control it remotely, how you can control many computerized things. And that's an iPad. And that's an iPad, right? And uh -huh. it goes both ways. The iPad can control the console as well. Whoa. So you're moving it on the iPad and it's controlling the soundboard. That's correct. And that means I can walk around the building with just the iPad and make adjustments to things remotely. So what does an audio engineer do at a performing arts theater? Well, I maintain and operate most of the audio equipment in addition to our audio crew, which would be A2 and other board ops. Um, deciding which microphones to use for which productions and how they'll be used and deciding uh, the balance of different instruments and voices together, whether they're effects like reverb. Uh, it's really pretty involved. It's pretty involved. So these are the cast vocal mics. Mm -hmm. And then in the center of the console, can you get a close in on here on these? Let's see. Yeah, Erica, Tommy, Amanda. So those must be cast members. They are. So this is these are control groups, which basically are putting the cast inputs in an order that makes sense to actually mix the show. Because you have a very large cast spread across the console, and you can't. You only have so many fingers. <laughs> so you have to have something that's workable, and that's where control groups come into play. Because if you can see, I'm not sure if you can, as I switch between scenes, if you want to get close, that as I switch between scenes, they're sort of preset to how that particular scene or the top of that song is going to begin. And these are changing with the cast people that are actually in that section in that scene. And so these are called snapshots on the console that record the state of the console and the control groups and it, you can switch settings with just the touch of a button. So on your computer monitor over here, it looks like you have a bunch of sound cues, is that right? These are the sound cues for a production of Matilda that we did a while back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I figure this is a good example because a lot of these sound effects are real ambiance, like thunder and rain. Or you could have a creepy baby crying. <laughs> School bells outdoor sounds, but then you can have more fantastical things like imagining what a belly rumble would sound like before a burp. <laughs> and then the ridiculous payoff. Those are fun. So that would be part of what you do, which is sound design. Right. That's the sound, sound effect aspect of sound design that's usually done in collaboration with uh, the director for the show. Um, another side of sound design would just be choosing what microphones to use on the band and the cast and deciding how they're going to be EQ'd, how they're going to sound in the room. Um, yeah. 
Very cool. Well, thanks so much for having a chat with us today. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Josh. No problem. Thanks, Jane. Matilda is a musical and it tells the story of a little girl who was born to parents that did not want her. So our Matilda is played by this lovely young lady uh, named Audrey. She comes up to about here on me, uh, and, <laughs> and she brightens up the stage whenever she walks onto it. So when I grow up, it's beautiful because it's capturing the essence of children. That's always a very special number. Songs really exciting and dramatic. Revolting, you know, a fantastic finish to the show. things that you feel with Matilda is hope. And throughout the course of the show, you are getting that full human experience. Without giving too much away. <laughs> of me's covered with hair. <laughs> Off to the cupboard with you now, Chip. It's past your bedtime. Good night, love. Okay, so 
that was uh, our video. Um, hope you liked it. <laughs> I guess if you have any questions, I can take those now. Yes, students and staff, if you would like to um, ask any questions in the Q&A, we will moderate. That was a fantastic video. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Oh, you're very welcome. It was fun. It was fun for all of us to make because we haven't had a lot to do um, with our normal jobs around here lately. We've been doing kind of, kind of like cleaning up and other kind of projects to prepare for when we're able to have audiences again. But, um, you know, so I know the lighting, uh, Rob, the master electrician who does all the lighting was very excited to build some cues to show you <laughs> because he hasn't done it in a while. So that was fun. All right, don't be shy students. Let's ask some questions. Actually, I'll, I'll start one, um, one off. What, did you have a production that was in process when the pandemic hit? Um, we were, so that was in March and we ended up, March is usually our time where we're doing a lot of concerts. So it's like one, one night events. We had to cancel a bunch of concerts, um, but we were about to do in April, we would have opened our production of Sound of Music. So, and then we were going to do Mamma Mia in June. So we were bummed that that had to happen, but we are trying to reschedule those. So, um, you know, we can still do them just at a later date. Uh, good okay. morning. Uh, the next question is in normal times, how long does it take you to prepare a stage production? Um, so we usually do casting about six to eight weeks out of the actual show opening. And then the actors rehearse for about two weeks only. And then they come into the theater. We have a rehearsal space, they rehearse. And then they come into the theater on the third week for the tech week rehearsal. So the actors get only three weeks to really get it all together. Um, the set designers, and wardrobe designers and people like that have more time to prepare, but the actors get about three weeks. Um, the next question is, how did you actually put that video together? Oh, <laughs> I, um, I just kind of walked around with my phone and uh, whoever was here, uh, I just grabbed them. And actually I kind of picked who I wanted because they had maybe more exciting jobs to talk about than um, someone that is an usher or something right now because there's nothing to usher. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I just put it together. I just uh, interviewed them and then I took the clips and I edited them in Final Cut Pro, which is the editing software that I use. And all those clips you saw from our, our past shows, that montage I did in the beginning, those were all shows we've done here. It was West Side Story, um, Peter Pan, which was a huge show we've done here uh, many times, but we're known for it because um, Kathy Rigby, who played Peter Pan, has done it here multiple times. And McCoy Rigby Entertainment, we work with them to produce um, our Broadway series. So, yeah. Um, let's see here. Another question is, could you please tell the students how you came to work for the La Mirada Theater? Yes. Yeah, so um, it's interesting. I actually, when I first applied here um, in 2001, actually, a long time ago, I applied to be a stagehand. So I worked backstage and I did everything from assisting the lighting and sound departments, um, you know, putting my, actually physically putting the microphones on the actors. Um, I did, I worked in the wardrobe department, helping get the actors ready with all the wardrobe pieces they needed for each show. So I worked backstage for quite a bit and learned all the operations that go on back there. And then eventually positions opened up in the office where, um, I wanted to learn more about doing the marketing and making the playbills and editing videos um, for promotion. We run a YouTube channel, uh, all the social media channels and we needed to do more promoting. So I got really involved in that. But before all of that, I went to Cal State Fullerton and 
uh, for college and I studied in the theater department and I, um, I started really falling in love with all aspects of theater during that time. So when you're preparing for production, how do you find a cast? So we have a casting director and she'll put out a notice um, to all actors in local areas and they will sign up to come audition and she'll run about a week of auditions and then they pick. They, they usually do, you know, a, a, a preliminary and then they'll do callbacks, a series of callbacks with directors and producers and then they finally get the cast together. So if you had to give advice to middle school students who have never thought about any aspect of theater, um, but maybe after seeing this today or maybe having talked to somebody, there's definitely some level of interest, what would you recommend? Um, let's see, I, there's so many things to get involved with in a theater. And I, I personally think if you have any any sort of interest in any of the departments, um, whether it be acting or if you want to learn more about a soundboard and how that works. I think that once we're kind of through this pandemic, there's going to be real opportunity to maybe volunteer at some places to learn. Um, I think definitely get involved if your schools have any kind of classes to take. Um, and then you can start trying out things you like, you know, you, you can learn uh, the lighting board, the carpentry, you can build a set, maybe you want to paint sets, maybe you want to be a prop master, you handle all the props for an, a, a stage production, or you want to be a stage manager, they're actually amazing um, people that are in charge of everything that happens during a production, they're calling the cues, they're making sure everybody's safe and um, that the actors are doing their job as the director intended. So there's so many things to do. I think you can find opportunities at school, um, outside of school. I know there's a lot of organizations that maybe you just look into trying different things. And then once you find out the things you really like, um, take more classes, maybe study that particular thing in college if you choose to do that. Um, see more theater. I, I think just seeing a bunch of theater will open your eyes to all the different types of things out there. Yeah. Um, let's see, how many productions do you put on per year? Um, so the big productions that are musicals or plays, we do five of those per season. Um, which is about a year, but we go by kind of a school year, which is September to June. So we do about five big shows per year. And then when we're not doing those big theatrical productions, like I mentioned before, we're doing concerts, comedy shows, dance shows, um, all sorts of other things that might come in to this theater. So we're always busy, but those kind of theatrical productions, it's about five, sometimes six a year. And what types of dances or concerts have you hosted in this theater? Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of what some of the more known ones could be that maybe, I don't know if you guys know who Tony Bennett is. <laughs> um, Tony Bennett was recently here for our 40th anniversary. He opened the theater. Um, he was one of the very first performers here at this theater in 1977 when it opened as a theater. And uh, we brought him back for the 40th anniversary. So that was a pretty big deal. He's a huge legend. Um, we've had comedians, uh, Joan Rivers has been here. Bob Newhart has been here. I'm sure some of these names might be too old for some of these students to know who these people are, but um, they're legendary in their fields for sure. Um, some concerts we've had, uh, some 80s bands. Uh, we had Berlin here. <laughs> uh, we've had, uh, you know, a wide variety. We like to mix it up so there's something for everybody. We've done jazz. Um, uh, let's see. We have a symphony that plays here as well, La Mirada Symphony. They do about four free concerts per year. 
Um, we have a teen group that does theater for teens and it's called Phantom Projects. And they do shows about issues that pertain to younger audiences and younger students. And um, that's a group that's great to get involved with too, if you ever wanna try different things. Um, yeah, we just do a wide variety, whatever comes our way, if it looks interesting and we think our audience would enjoy it, we try to book it or produce it, I guess. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we have a lot of animal lovers at our school. Please share the story of how you rescued Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, okay, Amanda Alfieri. Um, so actually, I now have two cats that I've rescued from this theater. Benedict was the first one. Um, so there was a kit. We have, you know, just like any building, there's a shrubbery outside. And uh, one of our workers had noted or had heard a kitten crying in the bushes. And of course they were about to call animal control to come get it. And I ran out there and it, that's fine if you wanna call animal control. But I said, you know what, let me just go ahead and take that kitten. <laughs> it's like, uh, I'll just take care of that kitten and I'll find it at home. And then of course I fell in love with this kitten and I got him very healthy. He was. He was um, abandoned and he was very young. He needed to be bottle fed still. And I just fell in love with him. He became my little guy. So I decided to keep him and I still have him. He's seven years old now. And just recently, um, a litter of kittens was born on our theater dock, uh, just off of the side of the stage. And um, I also took one of those kittens because <laughs> I can't help myself. So I have two theater cats. That is fantastic. You're talking <laughs> to the right crowd. Um, so I'm going to combine two questions and then there's one more after that. Um, so what was your personal favorite production in the theater, but also what was the most popular you think? Oh, wow. Um, great questions. Um, one of my favorite shows that we've done here. Um, actually, I showed you clips from Matilda. Matilda was one of my favorites. The music is so good in that show and the show has a lot of heart. I love that it's a young woman who finds, you know, the strength to stand up to adults that didn't, that weren't showing her that they uh, really cared about her future or wanted any kind of they didn't really want to support her and they weren't paying attention to her and her dreams and she stood up to them and it's just uh, and then you know all the classmates had their own kind of standing up moments to do with the adults in their lives and I just thought it was very powerful the music is just so good so Matilda was one of my favorites here the most popular one um let's see Les, Les Mis was a huge show for us. And that show is popular around the world. You just cannot ever find, I mean, it's been done in, in every language. It's been done all over the world to selling, selling out arena crowds. It's just a huge popular show. The music is beautiful and timeless. Um, so that one was popular here. And um, Peter Pan, Peter Pan is always super popular. And I think it's just amazing. You can make people fly on stage. Um, and uh, it's this magical, it's a magical production and it gives you a sense of uh, hope and it's just really fun too, overall. Um, let's see, next question. If you're not an actor, it, but you wanted to start doing stuff like this, where would you recommend to start? Um, you know, I think that you do it in school if you can. I mean, I think that there, I really believe that arts and theater arts should be in all schools. I know that they're not right now. And that is something I'm very passionate about. I think that every student should have an opportunity to explore all different types of arts and theater is key in that. Um, so I would recommend finding classes to take. Um, 
and then just keep studying the things that you like about it. Start learning monologues, you know, um, just figure out what you like about it too and, and where your passion's coming from and just be natural and audition, you know, when you're, when, when it's time and, and we have shows up and running again, start auditioning for stuff. I think that the business, the acting business is very difficult because it is, um, it's hard. You get, you'll get rejected a lot because casting directors are looking for a certain thing. It's not a personal, if you don't get the job, it's just that you didn't fit what they were looking for at that moment. But the actors that I work with at this theater, they audition constantly. They're constantly auditioning. They're constantly trying. They're constantly growing, learning. What other skills might you want to bring to the table? Do you want to get good at juggling? Do you want to be a great dancer, also a singer and an actor? I mean, the skills, the more skills you have that you can bring to your acting are going to help you in the long run. And have fun. <laughs> well, that concludes our questions. I want to say on behalf of all of us at Clifton, thank you so much for giving us this beautiful opportunity to learn about the La Mirada Theater, Theater and all the intricate details that go into this amazing work. And we appreciate your time and thank you so much. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure. And I hope that when we open up again, that you'll all come see a show here and I'll be sure to let you guys know what we've got going on and invite you to come see something here. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much and have a great day. You too. Bye everyone. Thank you.